We're going to cover the anatomy of CT scans and do an introduction. And we're going to answer the questions, what is a CT image? How is it obtained? And what way is the information presented? And what appears bright, dark, and gray in a CT? Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Morton, and I'm the noted anatomist. So this is going to be from the perspective of an anatomist. And so I'm not a radiologist, and I'm not a clinician. So this is not meant to be as a diagnostic resource or a resource for the way radiologists look at axial CT images. It's meant to show the major thoracic and anatomic structures in axial CT scans from so the, the way you usually see it is an anatomy, like bones like that. But now you're going to be looking at it through CT images. So it's a resource to help students learn anatomy through CT imaging and to help you get your radiology eyes. All right, so what's a CT scan? How is it obtained? A CT scanner projects x-rays in a circular motion with detectors on the opposite side of the body. So here's a CT scanner and a patient lies on his or her back and then that table moves them head first through that circle where these x-rays project and detectors pick it up after the x-rays go through the body. Uh, on the side view, here's a patient on that table and that yellow line represents those that beam of x-rays and the table moves and those beam of x-rays go through and then there's... Um, they're received, those x-rays are received on the other side after gone through the body, after they have gone through the body. Now, how is the information usually presented? Body tissue slices are mathematically reconstructed and then displayed on grayscale matrix like this. So there's the axial plane, coronal, and sagittal planes all on a gray. Uh, scale matrix. So let's talk about each of these planes. An axial plane, it's a horizontal line that divides structures into superior and inferior parts like this. And now I'm going to do a little bit of a tangent because in cross sections, anatomists view cross sections from head to foot like this. And that's how the image is often presented. In contrast, radiologists view cross sections from foot to head like this. And that's what the image looks like. So when we put them beside each other, You'll notice that the back of an anatomy cross-section is at the top of the image, and the back of an axial section of radiographs were at the bottom. Wow! Anatomists and radiologists should have got a, like, you know, some type of a spot of tea in the 70s and said, you know, we got to make sure we don't do what we did with like left and right sides of the roads with like cross sections and they did and we're stuck with it so the take-home message is in axial ct cross sections this is how they're always viewed the back is always on the bottom the posterior and that's a spinous process that helps me see whereas the top of an image is anterior that's the sternum and you're always viewing axial cts or mris when that happens from foot to head so you're looking at the feet or from the foot of the patient up which means that's right and that's left and if you ever forget it shake introduce yourself to the patient and shake their hands you take your right hand and take their right hand and you go hey how are you doing nice to meet you your right hand always goes over to their right so there it is anterior, posterior, right, and left. So the axial plane, these are showing different, uh, in the axial plane, these are different sections in the axial plane going down, down, down. It's really cool to see the anatomy in these different views. A coronal plane is a longitudinal line that divides a structure into anterior and posterior parts like this, and then you view it. And so here it is in a coronal plane as if you're nose to nose with the patient in this image, superior, inferior, right, and left. And as we move through this series of sections, you get an idea of, you can see really cool anatomy going from front to back. Now, a sagittal plane is a longitudinal line that divides a structure into left and right parts like this, and then you view the sagittal plane. And so this is now showing a superior and inferior, anterior and posterior, and we're now going through this image in a sagittal plane. And again, you see the same thoracic anatomy, except you see, in this case, thoracic anatomy in a really cool different view. And so I keep saying so. It's really annoying. I'd probably get really annoyed if I keep hearing that. And therefore, you'll... <laughs> whatever. CT Im the data sets show CT images in axial, coronal, and sagittal planes. And there's also another thing called volume rendering that, that computers can do and radiologists do where they take and slurp up all this data and you can make a three-dimensional volume rendering of the data. It's very cool. But I'm just going to focus on the three major sections. What is bright, dark, and gray in a CT? So, I was about to say so again, but I didn't. The scanner emits x-rays towards the patient from various angles. So that yellow line is the x-ray, and the detectors measure the difference between x-rays that are absorbed by the body 
dense things like bones, and x-rays completely transmitted through the body, like what happens when x-rays go through air. And then the data is brought. And so what we see is that there is a bright area when there's high density, they call high attenuation, so bone. So there's the sternum and the ribs and the vertebra, bright, they're white, high attenuation, high density. So the whiter it is, the more dense it is. And also high density could be there because of a contrast that injected. So here is a CT scanner and there is some, an intravenous line that's providing a contrast into the bloodstream to make the blood bright. Um, here's an axial CT scan of someone who has a pulmonary embolism. Notice that the pulmonary artery that should be just a vessel is the same density as a bone because of the contrast. Um, also, there's a superior vena cava with contrast, azagous vein without contrast. Uh, black shows low density or low attenuation. So this is like air. So there's the right lung. It's black because it has low attenuation. There's no density to it. You'll notice the circle when I see a cer this exact, uh, exact same brightness or darkness, they're usually the same thing. In this case, that's air. That's your trachea, your windpipe. The different shades of gray, insert joke here, shows different or varying degrees of density and attenuation. So fat that's shown there in the subcutaneous tissue has a lower attenuation than say this pectoralis major muscle, which is a little bit more dense, but not as dense as bone, okay? There's some other, uh, the paraspinal muscles. I want to give uh, just one suggestion. To have an anatomy book or atlas handy as you study these axial CT scans or any type of sectional imaging, because if you've got this book and you can place it right beside you, it makes it easier if you point and say, I want to see this aortic arch, and then you find the aortic arch, and so you're able to follow that aortic arch with your finger at the same time you're following the aortic arch in the axial CT, and it helps you put the anatomy together. Okay. So that, my friends, is showing the anatomy of CT scans in a nutshell.